just read, my friends, a number of women and their names and the fact that they were killed in abortion clinics just like this. And I want to put a little context to their names because they're not just names on a paper. They've been the secondary victims of abortion. We know the primary victim of abortion, and that's the innocent child. And we've lost 55 million of these innocent babies. But in order so that these women have not died in vain, I want to speak a little bit about their stories. And some of this is graphic, but it should be graphic because that's what's going on inside of Planned Parenthood. I want to talk about Tanya Reeves. Tanya Reeves was killed in a Planned Parenthood facility in Chicago just a couple of years ago. You know, it's been said, if you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And if you're an abortionist, every solution is solved by an abortion. So Amanda Gitler gave Tanya Reeves an abortion. And she bled a little bit, so she gave her another abortion. And she continued to bleed, so she gave her another abortion. And after three abortions, Tanya continued to bleed because her uterine artery was pierced by the abortion instrument. And because she's such a quack, a snake oil salesman, the lowest of the low in the medical community, she didn't know what else to do. So she let Tanya sit in the hallway of Planned Parenthood for five and a half hours as she bled and bled and bled. And before they called 911, she was almost comatose. She finally made it to the emergency room where a level one trauma center could not undo the damage that Planned Parenthood did to Tanya Reeves. Ask them about Tanya Reeves. Ask them about the life that doesn't matter. Because I say all lives matter. And the war on women is beginning right here in Planned Parenthood. Let's talk about Lakeisha Wilson. Lakeisha Wilson was just killed a couple of months ago at preterm abortion clinic in Cleveland, Ohio. Lakeisha went in a very healthy, young African-American woman and very pregnant. When the, EN, the EMS arrived, the emergency medical crew arrived, her legs were still in the stirrups and she was stone cold dead. The abortion clinic had no resuscitation equipment. They could not resuscitate her. They could not intubate her or put a breathing tube down her throat because the equipment that, she, that they had was so outdated. The elevator used to bring the gurney up to the third floor was out of commission. It didn't work and does not work even to this day. Fortunately, the EMS was able to get her down off the third floor, put her into the ambulance, and get her heart uh, beating once again, but it was still too late. She died a week later, and that was just a few months ago. Ask Planned Parenthood about the war on women. The war on women is beginning inside these doors and the doors of 549 abortion clinics around the country. And I'm gonna leave you with this because I could go on and on and on about Magdalena Rodriguez and Kristen Gilbert and Jennifer Morbelli and Maria Santiago and many, many others. But we are winning this fight, my friends. There were 2,200 abortion clinics in 1991. Today, that number is down to 549. It's, it's because of the prayers and the consistent action of people like you, the people that care about the least of these created in God's image. That is why we're winning and we will not relent. We will not stop speaking. We will not stop marching until every abortion clinic is closed and every baby is saved.